Hey, it's Candy. Did you know that I have a quiz to help coaches choose their niche? Yeah, I do. It's super popular and it has been taken more than 20,000 times. This is a fun quiz that takes you about two minutes to do, and it will probably give you way more clarity on choosing your best coaching niche. So now whether you say niche or niche, it's going to work for you. And if you're a coach and you have been stuck in niche indecision, wondering what to do, then you should take my quiz and find out what you learn. You can take the quiz today at coachnichequiz.com. That's coachnichequiz.com. Okay, let's dive into this week's episode. Welcome to She Coaches Coaches. I'm your host, Candy Motzek, and I'm going to help you find the clarity, confidence, and courage to become the coach that you are meant to be. If you're a new coach, or if you've always wanted to be a life coach, then this is the place for you. We're going to talk all about mindset and strategies and how to, because step by step only works when you have the clarity, courage, and confidence to take action. Let's get started. Hey there, amazing listener. It is your coach and guide, Candy Motzek, the host of She Coaches Coaches. Welcome. I am so glad you're here. This show is more than three years old. And whether you're one of our OGs or you're just finding us for the first time, I want to welcome you to She Coaches Coaches. As I was writing my newest batch of episodes, I had a look through the hundreds of episodes we've already released. Yeah, I could hardly believe it. Hundreds of episodes. And I figured that even though I'm always inspired with new ideas to share with you, there is huge value in many of the concepts we've already covered. So today is a special treat. We're going to dive into the archives to bring back a gem, a timeless episode that is packed with wisdom and strategies that you can put into action today. This is an episode that resonated deeply within the community. And as we're dusting off those virtual shelves, we're not just looking at the past. You may have heard it when it was new, but if you're anything like me, you're always evolving, always growing. So consider how much you've grown in the past years or even months. That means even if you listened to it before, you're going to unlock a new perspective. You're going to learn something new because you are hearing it with different ears. The lessons are evergreen and the strategies shared are the stepping stones to many of the success stories that you can achieve. So buckle up for a nostalgia infused value packed episode, whether you heard it when it was a fresh release or you're uncovering it for the first time, get ready to get inspired, and to take your coaching journey to new heights. Okay, let's dive in. Hi, friends, and welcome to episode 20 of She Coaches Coaches. I'm so glad you're here. Today, the heater is blaring behind me. It's winter and dark and wet outside as I write this for you. If you're listening in December, just after I finished recording, I want you to know that we're in this together. The She Coaches Coaches community is weathering both the winter and our current pandemic. Despite all that's going on in the world, you can still become a successful coach. People need coaches now more than ever, and it's the perfect opportunity for you to start and grow your coaching practice. You're in that perfect place right now. This is one of the most satisfying pursuits in career, and I believe that there's going to come a time when just about everyone will have a coach, and some of us will have more than one. Today's episode is part two of my three-part series about the do's and don'ts for new coaches. Last week, I explained why brand new coaches don't need a website right away, especially when they're just starting out and they haven't had any clients yet. And also, I shared a simple reminder that to be a successful coach, you have to start and grow a coaching business as well as learning how to have some great coaching skills. You've never been a coach before. There's a lot of conflicting advice out there on social media and the internet. 
These specific episodes are designed to share my thoughts and reasoning with you, and then I encourage you to take it away, think about it, decide for yourself, choose what works best for you, and apply it. When you take everyone else's advice and keep switching those strategy lanes, it takes so much longer to get yourself clients and to become fully booked. Today's do and don't. The don't is don't rush to quit your job. And the do is all good coaches need to be coached. Let's talk about each of these in turn. I'm going to start with the don't. Don't. Don't rush to quit your job. Lots of new coaches just want a change. They're tired of the long hours and heavy demands that they're putting in in their day job. Many of you may have even chosen your career, not because you really liked it, but because of the security it gave you. It's not unusual for us to think that a job with a nice title, a good salary and benefits is going to give you a pretty sweet life. And it does to a point. It helps you with all that outside stuff, but it may not be fulfilling for your inside life. But after a while, you're going to find that you're eager for change. You've thought about becoming a coach for months, maybe even years, and you just want to get on with it. But hold on just a bit. When you rush and quit your job too early, you might be sabotaging your success. If you're super stressed about money and how you're going to pay your bills, it is going to suck the enjoyment right out of your coaching. It's kind of like when you were a teenager and you broke up with a boyfriend and then right away started dating another guy. After a while, you realized that there really wasn't that much difference. Kind of the same person. Don't trade your dissatisfaction with your day job for a similar unhappiness with your coaching business. Your business needs space and time to grow. And if you put too much pressure on it to do everything for you, it's like expecting too much from a brand new relationship. If you think you can't be happy in your current job, that's okay. It may be thought work, coaching that you need to support you. And what I mean by this is literally learning how to be aware of how you're thinking and feeling so you can more deliberately choose a more supportive structure for yourself. Have you ever experienced this? You decide that you want to switch jobs. You find a new job that you want to go to and you quit that job that you absolutely hated. And then after six months, you find out that that new job isn't what you expected either. Things aren't so rosy there either. Now, If it's really time for you to leave that toxic environment, or you've been downsized, maybe you should think about getting another job, even a part-time job, to help tide you over financially while you're filling your practice up with your coaching clients. You'll know when it's a good time to leave your job when you see one of these two scenarios. First, you're either coaching more than you're actually working in your day job, and there's just no more hours in the day, or you have filled your coaching calendar for the next six months and you've got a wait list. So that's it for don't number one today. Don't quit your day job too early. And now for the do. Do number one. All coaches need to be coached. So here's the data. This is from my practice. Eight out of 10 of the people who come and talk to me, who sign up for a consult, they've never had a coach. And many of them have never even really experienced coaching for themselves. These are talented, amazing people who want to be a coach. They're passionate about helping people, but they don't exactly know what coaching is. They don't have that personal experience for themselves. Listen, I'm going to come right out and say it. It is really hard for you to attract paying coaching clients if you're not completely sold on coaching yourself. After all, who wants to pay you for something that you're willing, you're not willing to do for yourself? Can you imagine a dentist who never gets their teeth cleaned? Or how about a doctor who never takes their blood pressure? This makes sense, right? So if you want to be a coach, get coached. The interesting thing is that you're going to find that you love it even more 
because you've experienced your own growth. It's like having your very own bat phone. It's a direct line to fun, self-acceptance, compassion, perspective, and a place for you to learn more about yourself. Coaching is the best way to get more of what you want. Simple. I think, in my opinion, everyone can benefit from having a coach. Being with a coach isn't the same as having a supportive friend. That friend knows the version of you that you are, and they talk with you, they treat you like that person. But when you want something new, they may feel nervous for you. They don't want you to get hurt or upset the rhythm of your relationship. Being with your own coach gives you time to work through your day, your life, figure out what you want, try out new ideas, and learn how to be aware of your own thinking. And it's only when you're aware of what's going on in your mind that you know that you can make a change. Personally, I dream of that day when just about everyone who wants one has a coach. And lots of us will have more than one coach too. Do you remember a few years ago, nobody had a personal trainer at a gym. Now, look at the people who have this. It is pretty normal for us to have a trainer. And many of us also have a nutritionist or a sleep expert or a massage therapist all at the same time. And the coaching industry is going to be like that too. At some point, people might be working with a life coach at the same time that they're working with a health coach and a business coach to grow their business or maybe a career coach to get a promotion. The fastest way to get the life that you want and the coaching business that you want is to work with your own coach. And then we're gonna be ready for that tsunami of demand that is coming our way. I hope you join me again next week. I'm diving into the final do's and don'ts for new coaches on the third part of this series. And you don't wanna miss out on these tips. It's gonna save you money, time and energy and help you attract your best coaching clients faster. Now, before I wrap up, I wanna tell you about my gift. I offer it to all my listeners and it is my free online vault. It's called the Coaches Online Business Academy. When you sign up for your free account, you get immediate access to all of my free resources. Yeah, there's a lot of them in there and it just keeps growing every month. I've got a quiz that you can take to help you with your niche. I have video training. I have all kinds of PDF guides and checklists, all kinds of stuff. And it is specifically designed for new coaches to help you get started. All you have to do is click on the link in the episode description, sign up, and that's it. You've got immediate access. You're going to find all kinds of great stuff in there. It makes me really happy to share this with you guys. And I love that I can support my community, the She Coaches Coaches community. And through that, I support the growth of coaching with this online vault. So all you have to do is go to that episode description, click on the link and sign up today. And that's it. Okay, I will talk with you next week. Thanks again for listening today. Please hop on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. Also, I would love to hear from you. Did something that I say resonate? What else would you like to learn about? Click the link in the player and leave a comment on the post. This is going to give me great ideas for future episodes so I can help you best. Join me again next week for more coaching, support, and teaching to help you become the confident coach you are meant to be.